joining me now, Stephanie Grisham, former Trump administration White House press secretary and communications director and former chief of staff and press secretary to former first lady Melania Trump. She also is the author of the book, I'll Take Your Questions Now, What I Saw at the Trump White House. Stephanie, it's always good to have you. So let's get into this. I want yeah, your thoughts as we get within 19 hours of another Trump milestone, a day of infamy for him as he becomes the first former American president to face criminal trial. Yeah, you know, this week is going to be pretty incredible to watch just from the historic aspect, like you just mentioned. But this is something that I believe he has been dreading for a very long time, as evidenced by how many times his lawyers tried to delay things and push it back. You know, there's so many lawsuits going on, so many trials potentially going to happen. But this one, for me, I know is personally embarrassing to him. It it will personally trouble him um, when it comes to his family, uh, certainly with his wife, Melania, when we were in the White House and the news first hit with um, both Stormy Daniels and um, Karen McDougal, the Playboy Playmate, you know, I was with Mrs. Trump the whole time, and, and she wasn't happy about it. Uh, many, many days she talked to me about how unhappy she was about what was happening. Uh, she chose not to go to the State of the Union with him. She chose not to walk to Marine One with him. And, you know, he... He fears her, I would say. He's the one person, or she's the one person that I think Donald Trump really fears and, and respects. So I guarantee this isn't a great weekend or Sunday for Donald Trump right now. Can I ask you quickly about something Ty Cobb said to me on the show yesterday? Of course, a former Trump White House attorney. He said, if Donald Trump would just fess up, and say, yes, this happened, these two affairs with Karen McDougal and Stormy Daniels, that it would go a lot better for him at the trial. Do you think, and I'm not saying these affairs happened, Donald Trump continues to deny them, but, but do you think, as you mentioned Melania Trump, that if he's not confessing, it is because of Melania and him not wanting to hurt her, make her angry, um, be on the receiving end of her wrath, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think in the court of public opinion, um, and and also honestly with his family, if he did just fess up and say this was, you know, 15 years ago, I mm -hmm. made a mistake, and have be humble about it. Yeah, I think it would go a long way. Now, I think legally it probably wouldn't be good because then he's saying that the payoff happened. But, um, you know, he, of course, is going to deny it until, until the, the day he dies. Um, it's just who he is. Hope Hicks is listed as a potential witness. Uh, what might the jury hear from her that could be damaging to Donald Trump? You know, I think a lot of people are really hopeful that she's going to drop some kind of a bombshell. But um, my hopes are not up. I think she's going to, you know, not recall a lot or not remember a lot. She remains, you know, a loyalist with the Trump family. Um, this is definitely not something that she would ever want to do. So it does make me wonder if behind the scenes she was not threatened. But if, you know, the, the prosecution said they had some information that could hurt her. So I'm very surprised that she's actually even testifying. But mm. and I hope she has information. She'll do the right thing. But my hopes aren't up um, that she will. Mm. You told me on this show before that Trump directed you to deny, deny, deny allegations related to E. Jean Carroll. How do you expect him to react to testimony in open court from Stormy Daniels? I can't imagine. I think there will be a lot of, you know, shaking his head, muttering under his breath, disgusted looks. It'll be um, a performance for the jury, most certainly. I'm sure anything that comes out of her mouth, he's going to have a reaction to just so that he can, you know, speak later about what a liar she is and, and all the things that he says about anyone who ever says anything um, about him. So I, I think that that will be a day, despite what you know, his lawyers probably are going to ask him to try to remain quiet and, and not show any facial expressions. He just won't be able to help himself. Trump says he wants to testify. And you've said that Melania would, would push him to take the stand. Do you think she's playing a role in his decision? W would she be an advisor in this situation? You know, I think behind closed doors, as a husband and wife, she would probably say, look, if you have nothing to hide, take the stand type mm -hmm. of a thing. 
Um, and, you know, but I know this is just his bluster. And as your reporter said earlier, he has said this so many times that he's going to take the stand. And then he's going to come out and say, oh, my lawyers told me I couldn't, so I couldn't go out and do it, which is so funny because he doesn't listen to anyone. He doesn't listen to his lawyers. He doesn't listen to anyone. So it will be his choice, absolutely. But um, I think he knows if he takes the stand, that, that will cause him a lot of trouble. I'm, just, I'm curious because you were there. You were around when all of the Stormy Daniels allegations, the fallout, the furor about it all. What was that like inside the White House? I mean, what was the behavior of everybody? How concerned were they about this? Oh, everybody was extremely concerned. You know, internally, people were in the West Wing were nervous of, of what us in the East Wing would be doing. Uh, Melania often came out with statements that, you know, were not what the West Wing would want us to say about various different things. And so I recall one time um, the former president calling me from Air Force One to basically see how angry she was and to see if we were putting any statements out because, you know, we never we never checked with the West Wing if we were going to say anything. So um, he definitely was worried. The West Wing was constantly checking in with me. What's going on? What's going on? You know, I never shared with them, you know, her thoughts on, on it because that was kind of personal private um, conversations between the two of us. When I said we're not going to the State of the Union or she'll just meet him on Air Force One, I just stopped there. And I think they all knew in the West Wing not to push further or not to ask her to do any more more than that. Hmm. So a, a growing number of your former colleagues who served in the Trump White House say they are against Trump's re-election. They're using terms like threat to democracy. In fact, here's Anthony Scaramucci telling my colleague Nicole Wallace why even more people may not be speaking out. Take a listen. Well, they probably don't like death threats, Nicole. I think we could probably start there. He will be way more organized this time. One of the reasons why that insurrection failed is that he didn't have the organizational skills. He doesn't have the executive management skills to run an insurrection properly. But he now has willing participants on that campaign that are way more organized than him. And so do not underestimate that. Do you agree with that? And then is there anyone else you'd like to see speak publicly about their interactions with Trump? Well, I absolutely agree with that. You know, the death threats are something that anybody who, who speaks out deal with all the time. But he's absolutely right about the organization. And he's going to, you know, I know people thought our, our first administration was a mess, but there were some really good actors in there trying to work for the country and, and stop him from doing things. That will not be the case this time. He will put only yes people in all of the positions of power, including from the vice president down to all cabinet members and the heads of agencies. And that's something that should really, truly scare the American people. Um, they will be organized. They're going to, you know, uh, consolidate the power to the executive branch, which is going to, you know, stop some of the levers that we have in our government to keep things, uh, you know, safeguarded. So absolutely, I think that, that people are afraid that he will become the next president and the kind of retaliation they will get if they speak out. And to answer your question, I would love it if every single person who ever worked with him in the White House or, you know, in in his business world would speak out about who he is. I think that there's power in numbers. And the more of us who speak out, you know, the more the American people or Republicans will not be able to say, look, they're all lying. They're all disgruntled because that can't be the case if more and more people speak out. OK, my friend, Stephanie Grisham, always a pleasure. We'll see you again soon. Thanks. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the app store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.